The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, North Lincoln Fire and Rescue District 1, Oregon, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36969-01. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Starting on the face of the bumper on the passenger and driver's side is where you'll find dual air horns. Directly in the center on the bumper face is where you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving up onto the driver's side is where you'll find your mechanical siren. Directly in the center, D-handle gains you access into your front bumper load storage location for your front hose. Moving to the outer edge of the cab, you'll find a marker turn indicator light. Just inside that location, you'll find the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. High beam is located on the inside. Directly above that, you'll find an additional cluster housing an emergency warning light and turn indicator arrow. As we move to the windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. Moving to the outer edge, you'll find a mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. And as we move to the brow, you'll find your ID clearance lights. There are five located on the brow. Just above that, on the passenger side, is where you'll find your Opticom. Just inside that location, you'll find a forward-facing brow light. And as we move up onto the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's go ahead and take a close up of the images that we just talked about. Let's first start under the front bumper where you'll find two open ended tow hooks on the passenger and driver's side. Moving to the center face is where you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. As we move to the outer edge, horn and emergency warning device, that's the mechanical siren. As we move to the very front section, you'll find a D handle gains you access into your tubbed storage location. Inside you'll find dry deck and also you'll find your swivel inch and a half discharge. Close up here of the headlight structure housing your low and high beam headlights, turn and warning light. As we move around to the side you'll find the ID clearance light. Close up here of the mechanical siren and also on the bumper extension a side facing emergency warning light. Let's go ahead and move toward the cab on the driver's side. Let's first start with the side next to the driver's door where you'll find a easily accessible with a gloved hand. This is your locking door handle and also next to that a grab handle for gaining access in and out of the cab. Right next to that directly over the front axle is where you'll find your auto eject shoreline inlet. It is a 20 amp auto eject plug. Moving to the right you'll find an air inlet. As we move down to the step area, you'll find additional lighting. Let's move up to the door panel, affixed to the door panel, all of our safety and warning placard information, also door lock and latch, manual window controls, and a grab handle. You'll find the yellow placard indicating the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, the VIN number, all of your fluid capacities, and also the fluid capacity type. Let's move inside the cab now. Let's find at the very bottom section about the left knee of the operator. This is where you're gonna find the silver master battery switch. Right next to that, you'll find the engine, transmission, and J1939 diagnostic port, and then also ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, and regen inhibit switches. As we move up to the very top section, you'll find the 120 volt inverter switch. This will access for power on. Let's move just to the right and slightly up is where you'll find the ignition switch and start switch. Just inside that location, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. This will engage or disengage all emergency lights. To the right, headlight switch and then also a panel switch, which allows you to brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. Let's move just to the right of the steering column where you'll find your pump shift. There are instructions on the placard for operations from road to pump and also from pump to road. Just as a reminder, you need two green indicators, pump engaged and okay to pump. 
illuminating prior to exiting the cab for pump operations. Just above that, you'll find the OK to engage the high idle indicator and switch. To the right, you'll find the main mirror and convex mirror controls. And then also you'll find the yellow diamond pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release and Allison transmission pad. Just above that, we have some additional switches for engine brake on and off, a setting switch for low, medium, and high for that engine brake, perimeter lighting, fog lights, load manager, and mirror heat. Moving further up, you'll find the monitor for your backup camera, and then right next to that, you'll find push to apply windshield wiper fluid, rotate right to left for on off for your windshield wipers. To the right, you'll find climate control for heat, air conditioning, and defrost. Also right next to that, you'll find your electronic control head for your siren and PA speaker system. Let's look overhead of the operator. You'll find the height of the vehicle, 10 feet, 0 inches, length, 30 feet, 6 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 45,000 pounds. If you make any adjustments to your vehicle, please update this placard. You'll also find some switches here for emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Let's move just to the right of this switch panel where you'll find an additional switch panel housing the high beam flash, opticom, front scene, driver's side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. When any of these switches have been activated, the green light will illuminate, indicating the switch is active. Also to the right, you'll find your traffic advisor. As we move to the center of the apparatus overhead, you'll find a display for seat belt information. Red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted. Green, they are in the seat and belted. Also, do not move your apparatus when light is on, indicating you have a compartment door open or ajar. In the center, you'll find your air conditioning. Let's move exterior now, Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheel, and also a visual axle sight gauge. As we move to the just rear location of the driver's seat, you'll find your power inverter charge indicator. Over the top, you'll find a side-facing floodlight. As we move just to the rear door, once again, easily accessible with a gloved hand, door lock and latch, and grab handle. Let's go ahead and move inside now of the door panel area, affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch, manual window control, and a grab handle. As we move inside, you'll find the heater at the base of the seat. Also, as we move up from that location, you'll find SCBA bottle brackets in the seat back. Let's move overhead where you'll find your air conditioning unit. As we move to the rear wall, you'll find additional seats. These are flip-up style. You'll also find inside the EMS compartment, you have LED lighting and also shelving. Inside this compartment, you'll also find, when plugged into shoreline power, this will become active or through your inverter. Also, you'll find 12-volt access via this bus bar location here. At the rear of the engine is where you'll find your lift and turn latch for daily checks for oil and transmission. Let's go ahead and move exterior now and we'll start on the driver's side. In the pump panel area at the very top section, lift and turn latch will gain you access to your backboard storage and then also cross lay storage located in the lower section. Let's move down to the very bottom section where you'll find perimeter lighting. This is at the pump panel area. As we move up, you have a tubbed storage location for hose storage, dry deck, and Velcro to hold and secure the hose. At the very bottom, you'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Moving up, you'll find the location on the left where the previous drains were located. As we move to the right, you'll find your 2.5 inch auxiliary inlet, locally controlled ball valve, Moving to the right, your watchress placard indicating the type of pump that you have and GPM. Also a warning placard indicating that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and it's only after proper training. To the right, you'll find the manual pump shift override and then just above that, you'll find the fire pump drain. Let's move up to the very top on the left where you'll find two two and a half inch discharges. They are color coded and labeled. As we move to the American Flag Eagle Pierce logo, this is your large diameter driver's side inlet. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the minimum operation maintenance schedule. It's the placard just above the two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. Also, once again, the warning placard and also the watcher's placard indicating the type of pump that you have. Manual pump shift override. And then also as we move up, you'll find the pump drain. Moving to the center, you'll find the Pierce logo American flag eagle. Once again, large diameter driver's side inlet. Two two and a half inch discharges. I would like to point out this warning placard. There may be pressure behind the caps. Be cautious when opening them. Also, as we move just to the left of this location, you'll find the number one speed lay discharge connection. As we move up, you'll find the driver's side one, passenger two, driver three discharges. Those are two and a half inches. Also, the large diameter discharge on the passenger side. As we move up, you'll find the fire pump primer, Trident push to prime air prime for best practices at least 1000 RPMs. Engine cooler, this is a twist, not a pull. And then moving further to the right, warning regarding fall, always face the vehicle while climbing onto it. Below that, you'll find your tank fill recirculating line and tank to pump. Let's move directly upward where you'll find the deluge discharge, real discharge, and driver rear discharge. Also your water tank level indicator. Moving just to the left, you'll find speedlay one, two, and the front discharge. Also the minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 test pressure. You will find this warning placard indicating entanglement hazard. Because of the line's coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. In the gray module, you'll find your master intake gauge and also master discharge gauge. In between the two of those are the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged and these are utilized for testing purposes. As we move further to the right, you'll find your Pierce pressure throttle governor. Right next to that, you'll find an audible speaker, and the outer edge of that bezel does rotate to brighten or dampen sound. Just to the right, you'll find your panel lights and also an indicator OK to pump. Let's take a look at the rear section of the cab where you'll find an additional water tank level indicator. And then also backboard storage located here. Lift and turn latch gains you access into this space. Directly over the pump panel is where you'll find your real discharge. And then as we move to the vertical wall, you'll find additional steps for gaining access to go aloft. Let's take a look at the body section. First, we'll start with the front and rear of the axle folding wheel chalk storage. As we move up from this location, you'll find SCB-8 bottle storage. Also, directly over the rear axle, you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. And then as we move to the rear of the axle, you'll find the fill location for fuel and def. As we move all the way to the very top, you'll find a side-facing floodlight. And then as we move to the rear of the apparatus at the top section, you'll find an emergency warning light. Let's go ahead and start with the first compartment next to the pump panel. With the door compartment open at the top, you'll find your inverter. Also located within this compartment is your air compressor. At the very bottom, close up here of the storage location for your folding wheel chalk. Let's go back up to the top to the inverter. When plugged into shoreline power, the air compressor will be active. Let's move to the front of the axle area. You'll find this additional storage location for SCB-8 bottle storage location. Lift and turn latch gains you access. SCB-8 bottle storage with retaining straps and also oxygen bottle storage location. Once again, Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheel. As we look directly over this location, you'll find that side-facing emergency warning light. And as we move to the rear of the axle, you'll find the fill location door for your ultra-low sulfur diesel. It is the silver cap. When you move the flap downward and cover the diesel, it will expose the blue cap, which is the 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. Directly over this location, a tool board the handle gains you access when opening. It will open and fully lock into position. The release mechanism is located on the hinge. As we move to the rear axle, mud flaps, and then also the storage location for wheel chocks. Let's move to the next compartment where you'll find adjustable shelving and a pull-out tray. 
As we move to the very top section, you'll find a side-facing floodlight. And then moving to the rear section, a close-up here of the emergency warning light. Let's take a general view here of the side of the apparatus and also the rear section. Let's start at the very rear on the passenger and driver side where you'll find emergency warning light, a brake light, turn and reverse light. Directly above that you'll find the rear scene lights switch, also your license plate holder, and then as we move up to the very top section you'll find rear scene light, rear facing, and just above that an emergency warning light. Let's move back down to the tailboard where you'll find three clearance lights and then just below that you'll find an additional tow bar. As we move up onto the side vertical surface you'll find a fold down step for gaining access into the hose bed area. Also you'll find some warning placards indicating here entanglement hazard, pressure hazard, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion, and then also when climbing onto the vehicle always make sure you're facing the vehicle. Also a two and a half inch discharge. Moving toward the center, you'll find your traffic advisor and a recessed backup camera. As we move to the opposite side, an additional fold down step. Let's take a look inside the roll up compartment door. Ventilation and a through compartment to left to right. Let's move directly above from this location where you'll find ladder storage. You have a 24 foot extension, 14 foot roof, 10 foot attic, and also long handled tool storage. As we move to the rear right side, you'll find emergency warning light and a scene light. General view of the rear section, and also we'll move around now to the right side of the vehicle, where you'll find mud flap. As we move inside the compartments itself, let's start on the passenger side at the rear. Adjustable shelf, also this is a through compartment. As we move to the rear axle, You'll also find SCBA bottle storage location. Lift and turn latch will gain you access into this space for three SCBA bottle storage with retaining straps. As we move once again down to the bottom, you'll find Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheel. Exhaust is also located on the side. Be extremely cautious where you park your vehicle, especially during regen operations. In the center, adjustable shelf. As we move forward of the rear axle, additional SCBA bottle storage for three bottles with retaining straps. Moving forward of the rear axle, you'll find adjustable shelving at the very top section when plugged into shoreline power or through your inverter, you'll find a outlet. General view here of the side of the vehicle. Let's take a look at the pump panel area where you'll start at the very top section. Lift and turn latch gains you access to the rear wall. As we move down to the very bottom, you'll find once again LED lighting perimeter. As we move up on to the running board, you'll find a tubbed storage location, dry deck material, and a Velcro tie-down. At the very bottom section, all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Moving further up onto the panels where you'll find an additional access door. This gains access behind the pump panel and also access to the relief valve set screw. As we move just to the right of this location, you'll find the American Flag Eagle Pierce logo. This is the passenger side pump inlet. Moving further to the right, a warning placard indicating pressure hazard. Also the large diameter passenger side discharge and also a two and a half inch discharge. As we move just to the right and slightly up, you'll find your cab lift. There are instructions for its operation and also you'll find your reel rewind. Moving to the forward section, you'll find your cross lays, and just underneath this, you'll find an additional discharge. At the very top section, backboard storage, and then also your booster line at the very top section. Let's go ahead and move now to the cab section. We'll identify a few items within this area. Starting in the rear section of the cab, you'll find additional red handled straps at the hinge location for getting access in the cab. Also, a rear facing SCBA seat, fold down seat to the rear wall and then your EMS compartment in the center. As we move to the forward section of the cab in the officer space, let's go ahead and take a look at the floorboard area where you'll find a foot pedal. This controls the mechanical siren. As we move just to the right or A pillar, this will be your fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. As we move up to the dash section, you'll find 12 volt access via USB and also barrel style. As we move just to the left of this location, you'll find 
red and white candy cane labels indicating spare wiring behind the panel. As we move to the base of the officer seat, you'll find an additional storage location. Lift and turn latch will gain you access into this space. The passenger seat for the officer does have an SCBA back. Also, as we look overhead, you'll find push on and off white or red lens lights and also a switch panel, which houses your front scene, driver's side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene. Congratulations, North Lincoln Fire and Rescue District 1, Oregon, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36969-01. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.